Hello, YouTubers. This is a new session where we get to talk about a very uh, popular topic these days, which is AI. You know, how can we uh, uh, leverage AI to as software engineers to kind of leverage it in uh, daily life, daily things that we can do uh, programmatically. In the past, you've seen a a large series of videos where you know a members of the uh, standard community kind of got together and developed an open source library for OpenAI, which is ChatGPT OpenAI. But you know, in order for you to kind of uh, enterprise this and commercialize this you need a little bit of a higher tier in order for you to be able to do that and ChatGPT OpenAI uh, would be able to kind of give you that enterprise account but there's a little bit more to it and today I'm specifically going to talk to you about the Azure version of OpenAI where Microsoft kind of collaborated with uh, OpenAI Foundation to be able to offer enterprise solutions for everybody like if you are already having Azure Active Directory if you're already you know with the Office 360 you know you can get a lot of advantages like Copilot and all that but from a developer standpoint you know you're just a person and that's really the purpose of this video you're just a person who want to teach AI something and you want to be able to ask it questions and programmatically be able to expose these capabilities somewhere else right so if i were to draw a map for you here let's let's draw a, little, a quick map we are <clears throat> let's do this together so here is here's draw io and what you really want to do as a developer you have this thing called ai And inside of AI, you want to basically add your own files, your own knowledge and data on top of it. So that's your own files in here. And then you want to produce a deployment or a, a, a concatenation of these two. So let's just call it an app that basically, so you, you have the powerful, you know, uh, the power of AI. You want to put that in, you want to add your own data, and then you want to push that data up upwards to an app and then you want to expose that app to the whole world so if this is your dependency and there's some intelligence that's going to happen here and that's your basically your exposure layer you want to put that out there whether it's whether it's going to be like a and i'm going to show you this like a discord bot or a chat gpt teams app whatever the case may be you want to implement something like this so here's your data you added in some data here and the data got processed and basically exposed to the outside world how do we do that, right? Like, let's say, you know, we have our standard, which is basically a set of engineering principles and guidelines. And we want to allow people to ask it questions anytime we want. We want it to be able to, uh, 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 people to be able to ask it for code examples, uh, give it, you know, we, we are against toasters, like everybody knows, but, you know, it would, you know, people who read the standard understand toasters, like, you know, automated ways of reviewing code and whatnot. But can you make some suggestions? Can I talk to you? Can I converse with, with the standard book? That's the whole point of it. Let's see what we can do. Okay, so first of all, if you're actually a .NET developer already uh, and you are already using Azure, right? Azure actually offers a particular instance of OpenAI that you can actually use, but not publicly available yet. Like if you go to Azure and say, I want to use uh, OpenAI, you might be surprised that they're going to tell you, well, it's an invite only party. You know, not everybody can do that. Let me show you what that looks like. So if you go up in here and go to Azure OpenAI and you say, I want to create an instance, you'll see that message down here. This message basically says, Azure OpenAI AI service is currently available to customers via an application form. The selected subscriptions has not been enabled for you. So it's still super beta, super alpha. And I'll show you in a, in a second why it's super beta, super alpha. There is a lot of you know, kinks that they still have to work with. There's still a lot of issues and bugs that they still have to work with. But, you know, usually if you submit this form, you know, it'll take about 24 hours, 48 hours, depends. And usually they kind of give you, you know, the approval. Just notice that if you use personal email addresses and stuff like that, automatically you'll be denied. You know, you're going to have to be some form of a an institution or a company of some sort that kind of wants to kind of incorporate this as a commercial, commercial, commercial uh, approach. Okay, so you get denied if you don't. I have 20 different uh, accounts that I can use. Let's create one here in this particular account. I'm just going to go and create um, a resource group here real quick. 
and I'm going to call my here's a pay as you go and then I'm going to go down here and say this is um, uh, let's call it YouTube demo delete me resources okay so I'm just going to create this resource group just a container in Azure so when you want to get rid of something you just kind of say delete everything and th and that's it so here YouTube demo delete me I'm just going to go up here and say open AI so open AI <laughs> in the most funky way possible and select Azure services only so you want the instance that's governed by Microsoft by Azure to be able to kind of you know uh, use that particular or these particular capabilities I'm going to show you in a sec let's go ahead and create this one we need to give it a name so let's say demo demo YouTube YouTube AI uh, I don't know is that enough and then you will see here that I have a tier YouTube demo AI here it's not letting me because that's the name I used before OBS crashed and I had to kind of start over the recording uh, okay so you see here because this particular account is approved you have a pricing tier right uh, that standard is zero and if you click on this pricing design I want you to pay very close attention to that it's still experimental but some things will cost you a little bit of money so just understand what you're using if you're doing it for fun just understand that you're willing to put that kind of you know um, uh, dime into it okay so uh, let's create an open AI instance access to the whole network please don't take my word for it go ahead and understand what these options mean this is an instance I'm creating for you to kind of pull your leg in you know and have you try open AI in Azure there we go we'll give it a second there usually it's pretty fast because it's an invite only party so the compute power is not at capacity or maximum so there's always a space to kind of run run these things give it a second there so if you notice in this group just just heads up even after the deployment is complete right you can go back to the deployment here you may or may not see it right away like you'll see Azure AI services like it's not going to show you specifically that like see your says de deployment complete if you go to the resources you may or may not see it like if you go here uh, YouTube demo delete me resources yeah it shows up now sometimes and I have to you know this happened in the previous uh, kind of demo that I was making uh, sometimes you have to do control shift uh, not T control shift R to kind of get that instance to show up or you have to log out and log in or whatever you do with the brain you need to refresh your cache basically okay so we have YouTube demo AI great I want you to scroll down here to this part and there is an area here that says build generative AI apps so this is something called Azure AI studio right this Azure AI studio is super important because that's where you're gonna basically manage your entire AI world this is how you're going to train it. This is how you're going to create deployments and models. You have a playground to test things. This is how you're going to expose APIs to programmatically integrate with it. This is how you're going to even deploy apps for people to be able to use your um, uh, Azure service. So as we're creating this instance in here, you will notice that it your resource group is starting to get more stuff. If you click refresh here, give it a second here, or maybe a control shift R for this one there you go so you see things are starting to show up in your resource group this basically means that this is gonna create a bunch of resources and we're gonna talk about these resources like that key value like key vault saving some secrets it's gonna create a a search engine for you it's gonna store your documents in a storage it doesn't matter what the document is you don't have to worry about the formatting of it which is amazing you could literally pick up a PDF a random PDF and just upload it you know and all of a sudden you'll notice that you know it knows how to parse through that document and it knows how to enable you to technically chat with your with your AI instance let's give it a couple of seconds you'll see more resources being created in here look at this so you have the log analytics you have this guy which is Azure AI right here this is the original Azure open AI instance and here we go now you have this studio now check this out in this area here the first thing that you're gonna notice on the left side you have playground evaluation prompt flow fine-tuning 
and then data indexes deployments and we will talk specifically about these things in uh, upcoming videos but for the purpose of this video specifically I want you to just pay attention to this part you know the first thing when you create this it'll say you need to you need to create a deployment so let's go to the deployment page here's the coolest thing you're gonna see literally every offering every model you can imagine from every company out there that's the beauty of Microsoft like there go and say let's be the marketplace of this and let you pick up whatever you want you have these models at the top but you can also have meta models the llama model you know you can have Nvidia models you can have anything you want and all of it is in here even Microsoft Phi 2 model all of them are in here for the purpose of this video and because we talked a lot a little bit about this before let's pick up the GPT 35 it's fast it's, it's amazing uh, 4 is super slow uh, it takes a little bit of time but let's just go ahead and, and kick off with 3.5 so this is GBT model. So it created a bunch of things. You'll see some secrets and some target endpoints and all that good stuff. If we go to a playground, back to the playground, and basically ask it a question. Let's just go and say here, hello. Uh, what is the uh, biggest forest in the world? Just a random, typical uh, chat GPT kind of questions you yeah, will be asking you got the answers right away that's cool but you get that out of Bard you get that out of uh, chat GPT you get that out of Llama you could even run a local thing and get some of these answers that's not that's not the point right I want to train this thing specifically to do something for me I want to train it on a document on a piece of information and I want to be able to ask it questions and to see whether it can answer these questions or not. This is where it becomes very useful and very handy. So check this out. You have something up here called Add Your Data. And in Add Your Data, you can, you know, let me zoom in a little bit just so you see this part. So Add Your Data, you have Connect External Index or Add Your Own Data. So I'll click Add My Own Data. And then I'm going to go here and say Upload Files. These files don't have to be in a particular format they can be HTML MD PDF they can be Python they can be text they can be uh, Excel all like it's specifically targeting enterprise use right you're basically building an enterprise application and they're building that for you so let's just go ahead and upload you can upload one file you can upload an entire folder it's up to you what do you want to do let's upload the engineering standard to this guy so let's go here in the downloads and I'm just going to give it the biggest, basically the biggest um, piece of document in here. Can I just drag and drop? No. This is the standard. This is the document that I'm going to be uploading. Uh, let me kind of, you know, navigate then since it's not, it's, it's not being nice. Downloads. Let's go here. Mm, let's see. Maybe it's in my desktop. Oh, I did, I did, I did get a folder. I did, I didn't say get a file. And see what happens. So here it is. I'm uploading five megs. This is this book, the engineering standard. It has images. It has, you know, a lot of ideas, a lot of things. We're gonna kick off the processing of that. But before that, it'll say, hey, I need an Azure AI search service. So I'm just gonna go down here and create an Azure AI search service. Azure AI search like that. Here's the service. I'm going to create this one. Uh, and YouTube demo search. I think that's what we called everything. Just to stay consistent. Uh, YouTube demo AI. Yeah, there you go. So YouTube demo AI search like that. You can change the pricing tier on that. Just be just understand what you're paying per month. Like in here, I'm going to make it a little fast, right? But I'm going to delete this instance right away. But if you go and say, no, I want, you know, full-fledged capabilities and whatnot, it's up to you. But just be aware of what you're paying money for. I hate for you to kind of get a surprise bill with like $5,000 or something. It's not going to be nice. So this is the Azure AI search. This is basically going to take my document and process my document. And after it processes this document, it'll allow you to talk to it. You're basically conversing with with this document so let's go back so I already created it let me go back here and see uh, we might need to refresh this guy we'll see can I just do a refresh in here because I just created that instance 
I don't expect it to know. Ah, I have to do that again. Okay, so upload file. Here's a file. Click open. File went in there. Next. It's not showing yet. Let's give this a refresh just to make sure. So I see my Azure demo AI search in here. Maybe if I just create, yeah, the, the AI is still, sorry, the UI is still not in there. So you still want to kind of fiddle around. Like if you don't see what you're looking for, kind of refresh the page, see if it's going to do what you expect. Upload, upload files. Here is a next. Still not showing. See, that's the annoying part about this is that like your... You have to kind of figure out a way, and, and it will create the storage for you and all that, so you don't have to worry about that part. Let's try again. Next. Still not in there. Uh, where did we create this instance, though? Like, if you go back here, this guy is in West US and everything else is in East. That's probably why. Let me create another one. Azure AI search. Let's just listen learned on the fly. Uh, let's create another one here. So Azure AI search create. We get to choose the location. So it created everything in East too. So I'll just keep it there. Uh, demo YouTube AI search two. There you go. So that's East US. Just be careful of that because these little details will have you kind of reconsider multiple things it's it's especially not super organized when you're just trying to demo real quick and get a few things going I definitely don't take Joey in showing you how to click a bunch of buttons so we're obviously gonna have to write some code okay maybe now it'll be available let's see so data uh, upload files upload not a folder I just want to upload a particular file here's the standard next is it gonna show subscription pay as you go oh I was I was doing the wrong thing I should have just clicked yeah so okay YouTube demo AI search uh, this is default resource add vector search for search results I acknowledge that Azure OpenAI embedding model whatever whatever will be deployed if not ready cool here we go it's giving an index name I'll just call it the standard index so this is the standard the book that I'm uploading uh, scheduled updates do you want it to continue to pull that resources and run updates on it don't care at this point no scheduled and then auto select whatever virtual machine works and create so now here's where here's where it gets very interesting now you're actually telling this instance that we were just asking a second ago about the biggest forest in the world and all that what like what is the biggest force in the world but now I'm teaching it to work with particular set of data I didn't have to prepare anything I just said here's my book here's the book of the standard with all the data in it right didn't have to restructure it do anything with it and I'm letting this guy kind of do that processing for me so far so good right so while we're doing that let's go build like actually write some software that will allow us to integrate with this because this guy takes a little bit of time right so we're gonna have to do something on the side to make things to make things work for us so let's just do this I'm gonna go ahead and create a new console app right a very simple console app and this console app main responsibility is to basically go and talk to this API instance the AI instance through API it will hit that instance and give me some answers that's all it's doing right for starters a lot of people will go and say, Hassan, why don't you just click on this view code piece? And if you go and say, I want my code in C sharp, watch this. Ah, of course, it's, bug it's bugging out because of the. You, you will see a bunch of options here where it basically gives you. Actually, let me show it to you in here. So there's view code. Watch this. So if you're, if you're relying on this generated code to run this, it's not going to work. Just so you understand. Let me tell you why. There's there's very simple reason for this. You will see some things in here that if you copy paste straight into your environment, 
like this one this particular one here doesn't have trained data so this one will work but the one that will come out of this one and this is why it's not showing you any code is certainly not going to work i can guarantee you that right now i'll show you what it looks like actually just while this is working so you get to see because i have multiple instances on this so resources if i say the standard resources this is an actual thing that's running right now in production that i'm sharing with people but i'll just go to the studio in here the other studio and here is this project and here's the playground this is what this looks like this one is trained like see i selected down here and said give me my trained data so the code that's generated in here the c sharp code that's generated in here, if you pull that code and put it as is in your dotnet project it's not going to work right let me show you what it looks like right here put that in there it wants some libraries let's go up in here and put these libraries like this and then it says I want the Azure OpenAI. Here's another gotcha that you need to be aware of. When you're searching for Azure OpenAI, if you just type in Azure OpenAI like this, it's not going to give you anything, right? It's not going to give you what you're really looking for. You have to click pre-release because you're working on a bleeding edge kind of thing, right? So it's still bleeding edge. There's still development. So this is still 1.0 beta release. Let's go ahead and install this one. Here's another gotcha that's coming your way about this part. Here you go, install, install. Right, it's still complaining. This resource up top will resolve, but watch this. This chat message doesn't exist. Because it's beta, they literally are changing their models on daily basis, like they're pushing new changes and whatnot. So that chat message became chat request message and then their parameters changed a lot of things has changed anyway what i'm trying to tell you is this code is not going to work <laughs> right let's throw that code away like this and let's write code that actually will work for you at least with this beta release until they release something else uh, in that in that particular system so which code actually works well first of all let's define a bunch of variables and this is going to be very very dirty uh, code but it i'm basically using the time to kind of give you the insight but uh, if you bear with me a little bit i'll tell you where we get all that information from you see api base in here right i'll show you where you get that from in a second you also want the api key i don't care to share it with you because i'm going to throw that away there's also the deployment deployment id which is the one that we just selected with gpt35 turbo and you're really just like literally you can literally just get that information from from your deployment section i don't want to touch i don't want to touch this one because it 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 has the processing going on in it but if you literally go into the deployments you will see your you get a second there turbo 35 right here and then there's this text embedding data i'll tell you about both of them in a second okay so while this is processing let's go back here into that demo and let's write the next thing. So I want my client. Here's the fun part. In order for this to work, you actually have to go back to a previous version. Like the current version that you're using here is uh, version 14, right? The version that actually worked for me was 8. Okay? Probably there's a way to make 14 work. Good luck. But the one I'm going to be showing you is 8 because that's, that's the one that I know for a fact it's going to work with you. Okay, let's go ahead and create a client just as you create usually any client. So there's a client new and then you have open AI client, right? And that guy takes two things. It takes the URI, which is the API base. This is basically where you're going to be talking to the actual, a particular instance, the private instance that's specific to you. And also Azure uh, credentials, which is the Azure key credentials. And that's your API key like that. So far, so good. Let's go ahead and build a completion, a completion kind of request, right? So here's chat completion options, new chat completion options. I want you to understand every single step of the way. You know, this is why we're gonna we're gonna build it together. So there's messages. This is a new list of uh, messages. Expects you to give it a chat message. So this is a chat message. By the way, in C Sharp right now, like these days, you can do something as wild as just that. 
Like you can literally do that and it will understand that this is an array or a list of things, right? Should you do that? I don't know. It's up to you. You're going to have to make up your mind. The, the, the standard community have to make up their mind. Now, the question is, why it's not <laughs> why it's not accepting that? So this chat message expects an I list, uh, property or indexer, uh, chat completion options. It says property or indexer chat cannot be assigned, so you can't create a new assignment to it, but you can add to it. Interesting. So let's get rid of that. And let's get rid of this and let's write a new chat message in here. Okay, so there's two chat messages that we want in here. There's the one that's coming from the human. So I'm just going to write my human message. So this human message is going to actually ask specifically about the standard, like summarize brokers for me. Like I'm specifically talking about the standard brokers in here. And in here, you need to basically define a role and put the message, right? So I say chat role, and you are an assistant, and a description for that assistant, you understand you are an assistant that understands the standard. Okay, so you understand the engineering standard, and then you have here another chat role, which is the human, right? So this is you, the user right and you basically want to send the message to it so i'm going to pass in the my human message basically there you go okay is that enough not really we didn't really even get close to that we need to add in here something called azure extension extensions options right azure extension azure, azure extension options or configurations there you go Let's see, I put a, yeah. So control KD will help you out with that. And then this Azure extensions option. In here, we're basically telling it, we're gonna use Azure Cognitive Search to do that work. And the code that I'm writing in here is actually the code, is actually what's gonna give you the exact same experience that you're gonna get out of the UI. Ideally, I would show you the UI first, and then I would let you talk to the API because it's fun this way. But again, this guy takes forever to kind of process the data and whatnot like see it already is going into the second stage and maybe I'll show you the UI if it's ready but it takes some time so I have to kind of you know make it make it worth it for you as you are uh, watching this video okay so in here so you have this Azure options great and then inside that you want to basically say extensions and then new Azure cognitive Azure search uh, chat extension cognitive search chat extensions that guy right so here we go like this and let's see why it's tripping am i running let's see property or indexer this is also i think is a list like that or an object yeah there you go that's that's much better there okay so that's a configuration and then let's put a search endpoint this endpoint i'll show you where you can get it from very important endpoint for us to kind of use in this and then also I want the index name remember we called it the standard index we'll get that there's the search key I'll tell you where you get that key from that search key is actually new Azure uh, key credential and then you basically add the search key in there and then the last thing here is that should restrict scope actually I'll, I'll hold off on this one because this is this is also another fun one that we should chat about in a second okay Bunch of informations are missing here that we're going to go pick that up very shortly. But then lastly, you know, now that you built this configuration, the chat completion options, let's just go ahead here and do response. This is what you're going to get back from a chat completion option like that. And we basically want to say response, this dot await this, uh, the client, remember the client that we talked about client and then chat completion get chat completion options this guy wants the deployment ID which we talked about we defined and then it also want the chat completion options which we just initiated you run this you run this guy you can now print out really the response response 
response in here dot value dot choices first choice and then messages dot content dirtiest code in the world it's just the purpose of it is to show you how things are uh, running proper okay so that's that's that code right here okay now let's see if our model is ready to play around with it's ready so watch this I'm gonna now ask it standard specific questions like this guy is gonna be asked very specific standard questions watch this summarize the idea of brokers in the standard this guy didn't know anything about that when we first started now watch what it's doing there you go according to the standard brokers are wrappers around external libraries resources and services or apis to satisfy local it really is and it's giving you the reference it's telling you here's this reference here's where i got that from right here's where i got that information from so watch this if i click on the reference it'll say here's exactly in your document where this makes sense i want to give you that experience through an api because later on you we're going to need to integrate this with something something of some sort right so let's go back to our view code now view code is different it's going to show you that library that that um uh, generated code that i told you about that doesn't work right that code is not going to work for you but here's the good part it has some information in it that you could actually use like it has the api base so let's go and add that in there right where do we get the api key watch this here's the api key right here sitting right here saying pick me up here you go right and then what else is missing here we need a search endpoint the search endpoint the search endpoint is not going to be showing up in here i don't think because it's, it's the leaving it as undefined for you in here so you really want to go back to not the standard resource the youtube delete me resources you want to go to the actual search and you want to get that endpoint which is this one right here so let's go and put that in there as well. There is my search endpoint. Right? The index name. Do you remember the index name? You know, it doesn't matter because you can go back here in the index and you'll find the standard index right here. Here's the standard index. Right? The search key, that's the key that's on the search, not on the API. Right? So let's go back and get that search key. It's right here under keys. There's admin. You copied the key and you put the key right here. Cool. We just filled in these details. Now watch this. Here's here's the uh, here's here's the magic part, right? You put all the keys. You put everything. Go ahead and run this demo YouTube, and it breaks. Let's find out. Oh, because <laughs> so this task, yeah, you have to. You can't just do async void for a main function. Here we go. Let's run this. Watch the response. Here you go. So remember, I said summarize brokers for me, right? Watch this. It says brokers are a type of a liaison uh, between business logic and external resources, such as libraries, devices, or APIs, and it will give you some references, right? This is huge, right? Because you can literally train it to do whatever you want, and it'll be able to take that data and go process it and go do whatever we, it wants with it, right? I will show you in another video not this one in particular, how you can integrate this intelligence with uh, a, a, a kind of Teams bot or a Discord bot or whatever you like, right? But let me just give you that teaser, you know, because because you deserve, you deserve a teaser. I'm just going to go here and basically just say, let's, let me show you the teaser because this is, this is the fun part about all of this. Uh, the teaser here is about, you know, being able to see what it looks like in real life that you're talking to a, a an AI component. The idea here is to bring AI to people wherever they are, right? So if you want to bring AI to people wherever they are, you need to be able to integrate with whatever external um, uh, or exposure layers that people are working with, right? So let me just make sure that the instance is up and running. And we will be on our way. Just a second here. So this is this is from the teaser. It's basically a simple web job that's running, you know, integrating with Discord. And if you go to the standard community, 
Here's the standard community. Watch this. So I can now go and say the standard bot. Hello, can you explain, uh, I don't know, uh, the difference between aggregation services and processing services? This is very specific domain. That's not the thing that you're going to get out of like a, I don't know, a typical chat GPT client. You're not going to get that. Right here it is. Aggregation services are optional components that provide a single point of exposure at the the broker of the core business logic layer solving. But that's that's not a right answer actually. On the other hand, processing services are positioned between single entity services and advanced logic services. That's right, such as orchestration, coordination, aggregation, or management. So the second part is correct. The top part, eh, optional code that provide a single point of exposure at the oh at the border, not the broker, at the border of a core. Yeah, that's correct. That's actually a proper answer, a hundred percent. You probably can't see it because it's very small, but I'll show you in another video how to build a Discord bot in C Sharp.net and be able to integrate that Discord bot with this open AI stuff that I just showed you about. Um, if you're a software engineer today and you're not doing a lot of work to understand how AI works, you're going to be a dinosaur super quick. So get on these things, learn about them, learn how to integrate with them. I'll, ideally, and our ultimate goal is to be able to uh, run AI locally on your local machine in a small instance that could even run on a mobile app or a, a I don't know, a microwave or something. And it will, trust me, like people will not stop evolving and growing and, 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 and putting effort into things to make them fit particular exposure layers, particular platforms and mediums. Um, this is a little bit of a long video, about 35 minutes, but I hope they were worth every second. Um, uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please feel free to drop a comment in the comment section. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and donate. We have now very important causes that we have to donate to. If you think this video is useful for you, donate. Thank you very much. See you in another video. Take care.